My name is Alex Rogers. Before I uh, go any further, I just want to thank Ms. Tamara, and uh, I want to thank the uh, National Institute of Biology and Ms. Ronikar. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you so much for uh, having us here. I also want to uh, say a special thanks to Bojida Radisic, uh, who's helped me a lot over the years and uh, let me understand uh, what's going on in Slovenia. And I uh, uh, appreciate you, Bojo. Uh, you've been great. Um, like I said, I'm Alex Rogers. I'm the CEO of the International Cannabis Business Conference. Uh, we've been around since 2014. Uh, we started in America, went to Canada, and then we came to Berlin in 2017. And now we are the biggest business to business uh, event in the Eastern Hemisphere for the cannabis industry. Uh, before I started the ICBC, I started Ashland Alternative Health in Oregon, which Luca has uh, been and visited me a, a couple times there. Uh, amazing town, and in the last 13 and a half years, I'm not a doctor, I have a staff of doctors who work for me at my medical marijuana clinic, Ashland Alternative Health, and the last 13 years, we've carted over 15,000 patients. So anecdotally, anecdotally what we've seen um, early on was two major things, and one, uh, like uh, Dr. Neubauer was speaking about earlier, was epilepsy. We saw uh, this immediately, uh, helping uh, adults and then, of course, a lot of children who were really struggling. Um, we also saw, and this was probably one of the main things we saw because there was more people um, addicted to opiates in my community than there were who had epilepsy. So what we found uh, soon to be true anecdotally was that hundreds and hundreds of people were being able to reduce their usage of opium are uh, opiates, prescription opiates, prescribed by doctors, and they were also, it's, and in some cases, many cases actually, they were able to uh, eschew the drug, a complete, uh, forego the drug completely and get off all opioids. So we saw this happening anecdotally, more well enough to have a, have a may come up with a hypothesis that can then uh, find studies for this, and that's what's happened subsequently, is we have many, many studies now uh, uh, all over the world that prove that cannabis is not the gateway drug, it is the exit drug. And it's really important to understand that, uh, that um, how to talk with opposition, if you will. If they say, oh, cannabis is the gateway drug, everyone that has done heroin started with, uh, started with cannabis. Well, that's, a, that's reverse logic. You have to say, well, how many people who smoke cannabis are heroin addicts? And that's about 1%, maybe. If it, and so that's, these are the questions you have to uh, start asking yourself um, about, about cannabis. So, so I find it very surreal being here, and I'm, I'm super honored to be here. My wife's Slovenian, my daughter has dual citizenship, we just moved to Ljubljana, so I'm, I'm very excited to be here. And, uh, uh, but the verdict is out on cannabis, you know? It's, it's, this is, you know, this is much to do about, you know, everything Slovenian, because you guys are behind, right? And you have to catch up. And this is, this is what's really important. And so the question is, is not whether can cannabis is, is a good thing. It's a question of how we are going to regulate cannabis. This is extremely important because I've lived in, uh, uh, I was an activist in California years ago. I was an activist on Haight-Ashbury and Telegraph Avenue before Proposition 215. I was an activist in Oregon to stop decriminalization of cannabis. Uh, I've worked in all these jurisdictions and I also helped legalize in Oregon. I helped uh, all these jurisdictions legalize. So we've seen it. It's true. And all that matters at this point, you know, on a socially scientific level or even a philosophical one, is how are we going to regulate cannabis? Because we don't want to engage too much, even though we have to a little bit still in Slovenia, into, into what, we would, what, what I would just call rhetoric. So uh, Slovenia can spend the next five years trying to create a robust medical policy and maybe succeed, and, and or we can create a legal regulatory framework for an adult use program. And I believe that a regulated adult use program is the best path forward for medical patients, medical research, and of course, uh, public safety. And the timing is ripe now. And there's a few reasons why the timing is, is right. But what we can do is we can create a system for safe access in Slovenia. And safe access means you have a safe place to procure your medicine and it is a safe uh, product. Now the timing is good for many different reasons. Malta, Luxembourg, one of the three seats of the EU, the Czech Republic, Switzerland, and Germany 
are legalizing cannabis in some aspect right now. Now, who's the big one? Germany. Because if what's passed is prologue, then we know if the big daddy Germany does it, then we, get, we have permission to do it also, right? Let's just be real. So what's happening is Germany's, Germany's legalizing right now. And it would be remiss of Slovenia not to take advantage of this opportunity right here, right now. Slovenia is a country that has all the unique resources needed to cre create a thriving cannabis industry. And a big part of that is research and development that will create and establish proprietary intellectual property. Slovenia will never be the biggest producer of cannabis, right? But because it just doesn't have the land resources to support that notion and you need your arable and land to grow staple products. It's not saying you can't grow, you will, but you won't, that's not gonna be where the big money's made in Slovenia. That's not where gonna be the big influence is gonna be made in Slovenia. You're rich, you have a rich history in research and development, you have, a, you have all the best talent and human resources right here in Slovenia, right here. So you don't have to have a brain drain. You legalize cannabis and this brain drain that's happening in Slovenia because you don't have any vibrant, nascent, nascent uh, or you need more vibrant, nascent uh, uh, instit uh, in industries, you know, like the tech industry is coming a little bit. You wanna revitalize your manufacturing industry. This is a way that, uh, uh, you don't have to have your brain drain. We can keep all our best people here in Slovenia with living wage jobs. And this goes whether you're a scientist or a social scientist or whether you're a manufacturer or whether you, you're a builder. Cannabis runs the gamut and it, and it, and it, and it, and it reaches all ancillary uh, businesses. Uh, so uh, Slovenia, so I, I consider this a win-win situation in Slovenia right now. I feel it's a huge opportunity because Slovenia does have the potential through robust research and development to be the scientific and economic per, to, excuse me, to be scientific, the scientific and economic per capita leaders in the cannabis industry, whilst, whilst, while also being the exemplars of human rights and civil liberties by not putting people in prison for cannabis. Because lest we not forget, using uh, cannabis without fear of criminal repercussions is a fundamental human right. So, uh, do we want our more than capable and highly competent nation to always be followers with regard to common sense and efficient public policy? Or do we want to step out in front of the world and utilize all of the aforementioned attributes that make Slovenia strong and special? It's not really a rhetorical question I'm asking. Uh, 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 the answer should be clear to everybody. Let's let this beautiful, quaint, unique, highly specialized nation go forward with a marriage of practical and spiritual tenets that propel us to the highest echelons of the international cannabis space. It's been a great honor talking with you guys. Najlepsze fala.